And they'll reset. Nowitzki again for the lead. Bang! What's up, Mavs fans? Welcome into All Things Mavs. I am back. I'm sorry that I didn't have a few videos here lately, but it's been a wild, wild week. But here on Valentine's Day, here I am stuck in Dallas because of the ice. But hey, that's okay. But I did have to suffer through the Mavs. 121-118 to 118 loss to the Portland Trailblazers. A clutch loss for the Dallas Mavericks. They have been snapped of their four-game winning streak. I'm going to break it all down for you in tonight's recap and kind of tell you what happened, what went wrong, and kind of what I'm upset about in this game. Now, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and do that. I'm on the road to 4,000 subscribers. Appreciate all you guys that have already subscribed. It means the world to me. But let's start off with, with the stat line of the night, that is Luka Doncic, who had 44 points after having 46 points, his career high in the last game, has 44 points, 9 assists, and 7 rebounds. Huge night for Luka. He came alive. Really, He was alive all game. It really wasn't one particular time where he came alive until actually I'll say the second quarter is really where it started to turn around for him. And Dallas looked like they had this game under control going into halftime. I mean, they were up, you know, not by a ton, but they had a nice little lead going into halftime and I thought Luka would kind of push this Mavs team over the top with a Portland team who didn't have Yusuf Nurkic, didn't have CJ McCollum, didn't have Rodney Hood, and didn't have Zach Collins. But Dallas still managed to lose this game 121 to 118. So again, Luka has 44, 9 assists, and 7 rebounds. Now, Damian Lillard, on the other hand, had 34 points and 11 assists, but he had 5 fouls in this game. And so let me just take you through what happened and why it happened and how it happened. Third quarter, the Mavs just decided defense is optional and they don't play any defense. They allowed the Portland Trailblazers to drop 45 on them, and Dallas only scored 30. They went ice cold. The only person that hit many shots was Tim Hardaway Jr., and he wasn't really good in this game at all outside of the third quarter. I mean, you look at his stats for the night. He had 12 points, two of seven from three. Both of those threes came in the in the fourth or the third quarter, excuse me, but didn't really make anything when it mattered. And uh, you know, him not being able to score the basketball is a big reason the Mavs lost this game, but not the biggest reason the Mavs lost this game. The biggest reason really is the third quarter as a whole, but I'm going to get into particular players here in a little bit when I read you the box score. So third quarter, the Mavs get outscored like crazy. And then they come out in the fourth quarter. You know what? Things start to turn around. Now, they outscored Portland in the fourth, 27-18, but that obviously wasn't enough, and the Mavs just dropped it. So here's what happened in the final, really, two minutes of the game. So Portland's up 112-109. Luka Doncic goes to the free throw line with 155 left. He knocks down two free throws. And then Damian Lillard, next trip down, he makes a nice little bucket. The Mavs are down by three. Robert Covington fouls Kristaps Porzingis, who makes two free throws. And it's now a one-point basketball game, 114-113. to Dan gets sent to the free throw line with a minute six left. 116-113. It's a three-point game. Dallas has the ball with about a minute left left. Luka takes the ball up. He drives right. He garners all the attention. I believe he got switched on, or Damian Lillard gets switched on to him. He drives on Damian Lillard, who Luka was just cooking all night long whenever he got the switch. Drives on him. Covington's guarding Dorian Finney-Smith in the corner. Robert Covington crashes in on Luka when he gets to the block. Luka finds Dorian Finney-Smith from the corner, who had a great shooting night. Went 4 of 7 from 3. And Luka finds Dorian. Dorian knocks down a clutch 3-pointer to tie the game. But that was with 50 seconds left in the game. And everybody knows that's when Damian Lillard shines. That's when he points to his wrist and he says, hey, it's Dame time. And he did that tonight on the Mavs. Dorian was guarding Damian Lillard. And honestly, he didn't do a bad job all night long. Damian Lillard didn't shoot the ball all that well tonight. He was I mean, he's 12 of 26 from the field, 5 of 11 from 3. So not bad, not great. I think Dorian did a respectable job on him. But it wasn't enough in the end. Damian Lord, top of the key. You knew what he was going to do the entire time. I wish the Mavs would have sent two at him, but at the same time, other players were hitting shots for Portland as well. So Dorian did all he could. He got in his face. Damian Lord created just enough space to step back, hits a three, knocks it down. The Mavs or the Blazers go up by three. But 32 seconds left. That leaves enough time for the Mavs to find a little uh, a two for one opportunity. And Luka Doncic does this d does just that. Excuse me. He drives to the basket. Uh, I believe it was Covington on him again. He got around Covington and dunked the ball home. Mavs back within one, 119 to 118. Now, 27 seconds left. That's how much Luka, how much time the Mavs had after Luka made that shot was 27 seconds, which is enough to get another shot off because the shot clock would not run out, right? Well, here's what happens. Blazers go down. The Mavs send two at Damian Lillard. They find Carmelo Anthony on the left wing. And Carmelo sizes up Luka. 
Melo kind of puts his shoulder into Luca, and Luca flopped back. Not flopped, he, he fell back because it was a really hard shove. I mean, if Luca would have fallen back harder, I think he might have gotten the call, but Luca wanted to stay on his guy. So he defends Melo. Tim Hardaway comes around to double team Melo, but he gets on the back side of him, which leaves a wide open Derek Jones Jr. cutting to the basket. He gets behind Porzingis, and then he just kind of lays the ball in. Porzingis tried to block it, almost got to it, but wasn't close enough. Uh, and it was a two point game or a three point game after that. Mavs down 121 to 118. Seven seconds left. The Mavs draw up a beautiful, uh, honestly, one of the best last second shots plays that I've seen Rick Carlisle draw up. Set a few screens. Honestly, I didn't even see the whole play. I, I really didn't even like notice how the whole play developed. All I saw was Luca ran off some screens, gets into a kind of not his favorite three-point shot. It wasn't quite in the corner, but it wasn't quite on the wing. It was right in that middle position, which is a very awkward spot to take a three, but he was wide open. I mean, you literally could not have asked for a better look. And Luca, who was five of seven from three at this point, it just goes in and out. And the basketball gods just didn't want the Mavs to win this one, or at least to send it to overtime. I mean, literally could not have asked for a better three-pointer. The ball, the ball bounced into Gary Trent Jr.'s hands. Jalen Brunson knocked it out. Uh, they set off of Gary Trent Jr., but they reviewed it. Ball goes back to Portland, and the game's over. And uh, that's how it ended. It was heartbreaking. Uh, I'm most heartbroken for Luka because he did not deserve to lose this game the way that he did. I mean, especially with that final shot. He deserved to make that shot, but... He just didn't. And things went wrong for the Mavs starting out on defense. I mean, the score was 34 to 25 after the first quarter. The Portland Trailblazers scored 34 first quarter points. Again, you're not going to win a lot of games like that. Now, Dallas came back, answered with 36, held Portland to 24 in the second, but it was a game of back and forth. And then the fourth quarter, finally, Damian Lillard just came out on top. So now let's go ahead and get into the box score. Before I do that, I want to make sure to remind you guys to subscribe to the channel. Sorry I didn't go live this last Friday. As I mentioned, it's been a crazy week of travel for me. All the ice storms hitting Dallas have kind of affected me getting my normal videos in. I was up in Oklahoma, now I'm back here in Dallas. So kind of a crazy week, but back on my normal schedule now with some previews and some regular post-game recaps. I'll get my next live video hopefully this coming week as well. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Might do it in the middle of the week because I'm going to be snowed in here. But let's get to the box score and I'll talk about the individuals that really just made me mad tonight. So again, Luca, 44 points, seven boards, nine assists, great night. I think that's now a combined 100 points for him in the last two games. It's just, it's stupid. That's ridiculous. Uh, your next leading scorer was Kristaps Porzingis with 18 points, eight rebounds, two block shots, 0 of three from three, five of nine from the field. Stop. Period. We're gonna stop here. Porzingis having 18 points doesn't look that bad in the box score. If somebody looked at this box score and said, okay, 18 points for KP, two blocked shots, eight boards, not a bad night. It was a bad night. He didn't get aggressive early on, and we've talked about this a million times. He's talked about this a million times. He is a rhythm player. He didn't get his shots off early, and that affected him. He only took three three-pointers. I'd be okay if if Porzingis took six because that means he's probably going to make at least two because that's what KP does. He finds his rhythm. Also, the softness of KP down low was terrible tonight. I'm sorry I wasn't here to talk about the Pelicans game because it was one of those games where I would have said, I told you guys so for believing in him. But tonight is one of those games where I look at him and I say, you're 7'3". What are you doing? Why aren't you finishing shots around the right? There was the, the worst play of the night from Porzingis was where he had a wide open layup. He pump faked somebody. I don't even know who it was. Pump faked somebody. And then... He's just going to lay the ball up over the rim real nice and tidy. And then Derek Jones Jr. comes from behind and swats him because Porzingis didn't want to dunk the ball. Dunk the ball, dude. You're 7'3". Also, there were a lot of times he didn't take advantage of post-ups. He was There was the worst defensive effort I've seen from him all season long. Terrible defensive effort. Terrible, terrible. On, I mean, Ennis Cantor made Porzingis look like a chump. Porzingis had five fouls, and most of those were because he was getting bullied down low. So usually I am a Chris Stotts Porzingis truther, but tonight you can spew all the hate you want because honestly, it was a terrible night from Chris Stotts Porzingis. He played soft, he had bad defense, and he didn't take as many shots as he should have. He should have gotten himself into a rhythm. He's talked about it. The Mavs know it. He didn't shoot enough early, and that cost the Mavs the game. Uh, Dorian Finney-Smith, your next leading scorer with 14 points, 3 rebounds, an assist, a steal, a block, 5 of 8 from the field, 4 of 7 from 3. Beautiful night from Dorian Finney-Smith. Very happy with his night. Also defensively, I liked what he did. Uh, obviously, I mean, didn't work as well as the Mavs would have liked, but if you're the only one, the only one playing defense, you're going to take what you can get. Uh, Tim Hardaway, 12 points off the bench. Bad night from him. Uh, just... Bad, bad night. That's all I have to say. Jalen Brunson, 11 points, 5 of 12 from the field. Didn't make a three, but he had two assists and two rebounds. Honestly, looked like Dallas' the second best player tonight. 
continue to love what I'm seeing from Jalen Brunson. I think he runs the second unit so well. And also, he and Luka playing on the floor together at the same time, it's working pretty well. Pretty happy with that. Your next leading scorer was Maxi Clue with eight points and six rebounds, three of eight from the field, four of six from or two of six from three. Excuse me. Uh, defensively, he still looks a step slow, like he's still recovering. But uh, you got to pick it up a little bit faster. We don't have a lot of time to waste here, Maxi. And then I'm going to get to two more guys before I talk about Josh Richardson. Willie Cauley Stein, two points, five rebounds, two block shots. Uh, he had some good high energy moments. He also looked soft at times, but in 16 minutes, not bad. Uh, would have liked to see maybe James Johnson get a chance, but oh well. Three points from Trey Burke in three assists in 10 minutes. Again, he continues to have these nights where he kind of just comes out of nowhere and plays random little spurts of minutes, and he did it tonight and actually had a nice little effect on the game in the second quarter. Now, Josh Richardson. Six points, three assists, a steal, three of seven from the field, three turnovers, three personal fouls. Here's the thing with Josh Richardson. I am not one of these people... Who says the Mavs should have just kept Seth Curry? I don't believe that. I do not believe that at all. Seth Curry also hasn't even been that good since he returned. Like, he's really not playing that well right now. He's just, he shoots well, but obviously Dallas could use that, but he just doesn't. I'm not one of those people. But tonight was a night where I look back and say, what does Josh Richardson do? Like, you brought him, brought him on to defend your best play, the best player on the other team. He never defended Damian Lillard. Maybe once or two, one or two possessions. Didn't defend Damian Lillard. He didn't make a three-pointer. He got a couple shots at the rim. He, I, this was a very weird night from Josh Richardson, and I am very unhappy with the way he played. The, the reason the Mavs, the, the the main reasons the Mavs lost this game, and usually I don't st- look at two players or, or a particular player in, in general. I tweeted this out. The reason Dallas lost this game was because of Kristaps Porzingis' lack of aggressiveness. And Josh Richardson just being a warm body out there was all he was. It was like, it reminded me of Justin Jackson. When the Mavs would play Justin Jackson just because he was a body. That's basically what Josh Richardson was tonight. And I hated every minute of his game tonight. I, there was nothing that Jay Rich did that I was like, that was good. It wasn't a good night from him. So I put this one on KP. I put this one on Josh Richardson. Rebounding was bad too. They had 35 rebounds. Uh, they allowed the Blazers to get 10 offensive rebounds. I guess it wasn't that bad. They got out rebounded 36 to 35. It felt a lot worse than that um, because of the offense or the second chance points. I guess three point shooting 14 of 41. It wasn't good. The first quarter was terrible, miserable. Second quarter was actually pretty bad too. Um, and you know what? You just got outplayed in the clutch. I, I Not putting this one on Rick. I think Rick actually did a really good job tonight with um, getting that last second shot. That was great. Uh, there were some questionable t- calls of not attacking Damian Lillard when he had four fouls, but that is what it is. If you want me to go through the Portland box score, I'll do that real fast for you guys. 34 for Damian Lillard, 14 and 8 for Ennis Cantor, 15, 5, and 4 steals for Robert Covington. Uh, 6 points, 4 rebounds, and 2 block shots for Derek Jones Jr. 17 points for Gary Trent Jr., who, by the way, I would love on this Dallas team. Uh, 12 points for Anthony Simons. 13, or 15, excuse me, from uh, Carmelo Anthony, and then 5 points from Harry Giles, 3 points from Nasir Little, Zach Collins, as I mentioned, didn't play, Yusuf Nurkic, CJ McCollum, all did not play due to injury, same with Rodney Hood. Disappointing night, uh, we'll take a look at the standings real fast, the Mavs now fall to 13 and 15, which means I am not shaving yet, which I don't mind, I actually kind of like this amount of facial hair, but you look at the standings, Dallas falls to 13 and 15. They're nine and a half games back of the first seed. They're only a game and a half back of eighth place. They are two and a half games back of seventh and three and a half games back of sixth. They are four games back of fifth and four and a half games back of fourth. Uh, and then you look at the schedule. The Mavs have now, they've still won five of their last seven, which is really, really good. You got Detroit, Houston, and Memphis coming up, all of which are kind of sliding a little bit. And you got to take advantage of those games. Boston after that, too. And Boston has been really bad lately. So Detroit, Houston, Memphis, Boston. Those are four games that Dallas should be able to string together four quick wins, I think. I think those are beatable teams for this Maverick team. And then you go up against Philly and Brooklyn. So you got to take advantage of these next four to be able to move forward. I know most people are going to freak out about Portland like not having their main guys and saying you should have beat this team. Yes, I do believe they should have beaten this team. But Portland hasn't been bad this year, even with those guys out. They're 16 and 10. They're five and a half games back of first. Uh, they are eight and five on the road, so they actually haven't been bad on the road. They've won four straight games. They're seven and three in their last 10. Portland's a pretty good team, even without all those guys hurt. But yes, I still believe Dallas should have won this game. Disappointing night. Most disappointed from Luka Doncic. Let 
let me know in the comment section things you liked, things you didn't like about this game. And uh, Mavs, as I said, next up, that's Detroit. That is on Wednesday night. So the Mavs finally have two days off before their next game. They're finally going to get a little bit of rest, which is kind of nice. I'll have a game preview for you about the Detroit Pistons here very soon. So make sure you subscribe, give this video a like, and hit up that comment section. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, go Mavs, baby.